The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to our, our show, Our View on Public Safety. Uh, my name is Richard Aguirre. I'm the Chief of Special Services and the Director of Emergency Management. Today I have two guests with me, Inspector Clayton Walker and Jeff Medeiros from the Fire Prevention Bureau. Um, they're, they're both experts in subject matter that we're going to speak about, uh, school safety today. So I'm going to turn the program over to Jeff and Clayton. And um, we're going to start off on uh, fire education in the schools, correct? Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah, right up our alley. So yeah. I, I first want to thank Jeff, because Jeff's been my mentor for several years, and he has uh, relinquished the reins to uh, the education program. He's taken back over the plans review process, but I thank you wholeheartedly for the last four or five years of everything you taught me. Uh, we continue to grow as far as the education process. We were actually able to hold 72 events last year in all different venues. So. Of course, one of the biggest priorities of our venues is the school system. We have several different options when we go into the school system to teach fire safety, anywhere from age uh, kindergarten through 12th, 12th grade. Uh, one of the ones is, is our Spocky program, which you've probably heard on, on Mascot. I'm sure you're familiar, mm -hmm. Chief, oh, yeah. with Spocky. Uh, it's the ABCs of Spocky uh, and fire safety. It basically shows a video that goes through the entire alphabet each letter pertaining to a, a safety, a fire safety situation. And then at the very end, of course, Spocky comes and visits the kids. That's more geared to the pre-K, K, first grade level. We also play uh, a, a game, what's hot and what's not, where pictures are given to the kids. This is fairly new. And they choose a picture, whether it be um, an oven or a, um, a, a screwdriver and they put it in the pile of what's hot and what's not. Again, d definitely geared to our younger, our younger kids. For some of the other kids, we do, we do a program called uh, the Dress Out Turnout Gear. I love this one. This, this basically explains the job of a firefighter. And at each course, if Jeff is teaching, I, I might be putting on my, my gear, starting with my, my bunker pants, my boots, my bunker pants, followed by the coat each level explaining what the firefighter does um, and why we use that equipment. At the very end of that one is the whole purpose of that is basically when I am completely dressed with my, uh, with my face shield on, everything, the coat, the helmet, I look like Darth Vader, mm -hmm. right? And I actually sound totally different, but that's the point. If these kids ever see someone come into their, their house to, to help them, and I'm dressed that way, to not be afraid. Particularly autistic kids. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's a big challenge for them. Yep. It is. When they see that, they go, whoa, what's that all about? Uh, right. uh, absolutely. Yeah. So they get, a, they get a nice flavor of, it's a safe venue. They, uh, I'm, I think I'm friendly. We're, we're talking with the kids the whole time, and at the very end, they get to see that picture of me all dressed up and uh, helping them and saying, listen, if you ever see this person, this person's there to help. Don't hide under your bed. Don't hide in a closet. You know, come to us and we will help you. Um, some, other, some other events, touch a truck event, we, we do together a lot, uh, mm -hmm. bring it, where we bring an apparatus, a fire apparatus to the event. A, a lot of times, again, I'm talking about schools. We bring the apparatus and it's a big eye opener as far as other duties assigned. So we go through the entire truck, we explain some of the equipment, uh, some of the calls, but then we talk about some of the calls we go on. And the big mistake out there is that firefighters only go to fires, strictly fires. Well, as you know, yeah. right, it's, it's a lot of other stuff. It's, it's helping out with medical calls. It's certainly car accidents, you know. Um, it, it's, it's box alarms, not mm -hmm. necessarily fire, but box alarms, see what's going on, CO, CO calls. Uh, we have swimming, we have uh, Marine One that helps with, in the summertime with swimming and boating accidents. So much stuff that the public 
generally, they just think, oh, fire. Fire and that's it. So that particular one, we like to bring out other duties assigned to the firefighters. Safe trailer, safe trailer is a great, a great thing where we bring the safe trailer down to a school. This is probably the biggest bang for the buck. Uh, it's three sections of a safe trailer divided into kitchen, living room, and bedroom. Uh, and, and we explain each individual room. The only, the only tough part about the safe trailer, and I know Jeff taught me this, was that the logistics of it. Mm -hmm. So we have to get the safe trailer to the location. Some, someone has to haul it there. We have to make sure that the location is safe to leave it overnight. So if we're doing three days with the safe trailer, you don't want to leave the safe trailer in an area where it could possibly get broken into or tagged or, or anything like that. Um, so that's probably the, the toughest part about bringing a safe, safe trailer and leaving it somewhere. Because one of the biggest things, especially with the schools that we have in the city, when you look at some of the schools, the population is schools with uh, 650 students. So when we go there, we try to cover all the classrooms. So in some cases, we're there for three days. Yeah. So, and but probably probably more. Probably if we could, you know. Yeah. If we if we could do more, we yeah. would definitely do more. But like Clayton said, as far as bang for the buck, when we go there and we're there for that three day period, we're educating anywhere between 300 to 450 people. Yeah. And when you look at that in such a small amount of time to get that intense education into the kids as far as fire safety and safety in the home, it's fantastic. I remember years ago, just before Clayton came in, we had an incident that happened in the city where a young girl had uh, attended the class the year before. And unfortunately, a year later, she had a fire in her home, but by doing everything she should have done by attending the safe class. She was able to actually save her brother and sister and she ended up winning the uh, Young Heroes Award that year in Massachusetts. So it's definitely a program that's, you know, proven itself as to be effective, so. So I have a question. Um, so, you know, the, the general public doesn't understand, I guess if the kids go home and say, hey, the firemen were here, they mm -hmm. gave us a course and this stuff. General public does not know that we even do that stuff. Yeah. One of the whole education programs start in the school school system on the fire side. W when do they? When did it start? Oh. Uh, I can speak of uh, it goes back to the days of Mike Aruda. Mm -hmm. So that would have been about 30 years ago. 30 years ago. And uh, so for the last 30 years we have had a strong presence in the school system. And nowadays, beyond the public schools, we also have the Catholic schools and the charter schools, and we're in all of the schools, which is really nice. So through the years, we've continued to expand the programs that we've had. So now, like Clayton had said, uh, Clayton has taken over the public education piece of this, and honestly, I could not be happy. I couldn't ask for a better person to come in behind me. He's excellent, has a long, uh, career within the educational system. So he's doing a fantastic job. So moving forward, I would just expect this to get better and better as time goes on. But yeah, for 30 years, we've had the school system covered. And uh, I, like I said, I, moving forward, I think it'll just continue to get uh, a stronger program within the city for the kids. And I, when I read down, I fire extinguishers reading so you guys can speak to that as well. Sure. Oh, yeah. So we also, as we continue with the schools, uh, Jeff made uh, contacts, especially with the Diamond High School, as far as extinguisher training every year. Uh, so we go there, we teach them. There's three segments to it. There's a, there's a video with, with lecture. There's a test that they do have to take and, and pass. But the most important, as we know, is going outside and actually handling an extinguisher, not being afraid, right? Feeling it, the tactile learning experience of pulling the pin, aim, squeeze, sweep. And uh, one of the big questions we always ask afterwards is, do you now feel more confident mm -hmm. than you did at the beginning of class? Everyone, everyone's always absolutely. Of course, we don't teach fire extinguisher training to a first grader, right. we, we don't want, so we limit it to ninth grade mm -hmm. and, and above. above. Um, and the beauty of the training is, especially when it comes to the kids at Diamond is, 
they're looking for a lot of times for certification. And by going through those three steps, it meets qualifications for being trained. And so at the end of the training, either Clayton most of the time, because he's better on paperwork than I am, he makes out the certificates and they keep a record of it at the school that all of these kids have gone through the OSHA standard for training as far as fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm. So it's really a plus to them. It's a plus to us as well, because now we have people out in the community, more people than we would have that are now trained in the use of fire extinguishers that in the event of something ever happened, you know, they won't feel uh, like they're not empowered to do it. So right. it's really a good training. Sure it is. This is definitely the proactive side. Right. You know, you don't, you, you don't want an emergency to happen, but now the people will have the knowledge if it does happen, uh, so it doesn't, a little thing doesn't become a giant issue. Mm -hmm. um, next week, I know we stop reading in the schools. I've already been contacted by several schools to do the reading with the children. That's always fun, uh, going in the school systems and either reading a book that they have or bringing our own Sparky book with a little stuffed animal of Sparky uh, and doing the reading of, of the Sparky, uh, how he came about to be. Career days in the school. Again, we are, just, we are just in the schools. There's other stuff that's, that we're gonna talk about, but career days in the schools, so talking to kids about future becoming a firefighter mm -hmm. uh, in, in this field. We go to several schools every year to do our pitch as far as hey, we would love to have good people become firefighters um, and what the job has to offer and you know, precursors is what you need to get on the job. School fire drills, that in and of itself, I know it's, it's kind of educate, it is education because it's safely leaving the school, but we do 30, uh, there's 31, 31 schools, private and public total, that we have to do four times a year with the school fire drills. And again, kind of like the safe trailer with logistics, it's a little tricky. It's a tricky balance because we have to, we're certainly not gonna put the kids out in pouring rain or snow. Um, we have to work MCAS testing dates. You don't wanna disturb that, so they have to start over. Uh, lunch times, definitely don't, you know, some kids, unfortunately, some, some kids that might be their only meal um, yeah. throughout the day. So we certainly don't want to disturb uh, lunch times, starting and ending times. Every school has different starting and ending times. So you factor in all those things, and me and Jeff come up with a, a schedule as to what we're going to hit on what day, and all of a sudden it's raining. So that goes out the window and we got to start again. We got to try to you know, make a plan to go to those schools on a different day. So that's, that's a, a big issue. Community events, so now, we go from the schools to the community. And through Jeff to me has made great contacts. We have the housing authority events that we, we always go to. I, I specifically have two names here that help me out a lot, Rita LeBeau and, and Joey De Silva, where we bring, a lot of times we bring uh, uh, the truck down there and, and do that spiel as far as the housing authority. But great events, we have the Council on Aging Again, Jeff started it. I'm just taking over uh, through Jen Millerick. Excellent. Really grew to love, because uh, my, my background at St. Vincent's, mm -hmm. the, you know, 32 years of teaching, has been children and staff. Never really worked, and I said this to Jeff, never really worked too much with the elderly popula population. I've actually grown to love teaching the elderly population. They just, they have a desire to, to learn. They, they once, when you're in there, they give you full attention. There's, you don't need to like redirect a first grader. It, it is totally your attention and they, they absolutely love it. So of course we, we tailor the training toward them, like tripping hazards, uh, space heaters, of course smoking, <coughs> things like that. Uh, smoke and CO detectors and alarms. That has, that has really opened my eyes. I've, I've grown to love that program, teaching the elderly. Private businesses, constantly yeah. requesting us. Again, we have limited resources, as you know, oh, limited yeah. resources, Chief. We try to do the best we can to get to every event, but private business is calling all the time to, to either teach some sort of fire safety or the extinguisher training. Hmm. Again, we, we try to get to every place, but we do have limited resources. I wanna do a shout out to the open house. The open house was a huge success. 
yeah. this, this last this year. year. It had about 300 people. 300 people attend at the Flint Fire Station on Eastern Ave. Um, I, I invite the audience, please mark your calendars because uh, it's October 6th through the 12th is Fire Prevention Week this year. October 6th through the 12th, mark your calendars and come to our fire event, Fire Open House. Uh, we, we do everything there. We've done, we do the extinguishers, Sparky comes out. We, we show the kids the engine and the ladder truck. We, it's pretty much all rolled into one as far as what we were just talking about. So make it a point to come to, the, to that. Other events in the community, again, through Jeff's contacts, Comic-Con at the library, huge successful event. So we do the dress up, like I was talking about, the firefighter dress up, so I'm in my gear, but God, I'm standing next to Deadpool, Spider-Man, Superman. <laughs> Captain right? America. Captain America, <laughs> right, I can't, I can't even compare in that thing. But that's a great event, that, that is always well attended. Right. We, we did the YMCA Healthy Kids Day. Yep. Uh, again, another great venue where they went to the, the YMCA to learn about healthy habits and stuff, and they invited us there. That was great. And of course, the, the Ruggles Park. Ruggles C Park. CD Rec kick off the summer event every year as well. Uh, that CD Rec has, always a well attended event, lots of kids. And uh, that was probably one of the earliest community events that we've been on that has been ongoing for years so grace and her crew always do a great job uh, and we've always been a part of that as well so any of the events that we can get out to to be in the community to bring the fire awareness to will always be there when we can I do, I do just want to stress because you, you can't even imagine the amount of calls that come in the first week of October can you do this, can you? And that's Fire Prevention Week, mm. right? We can only do so much. I would much rather have some of these calls uh, March, April, May, you know, through, throughout the year as opposed to the, that one week or, or just the month of October, it, we get bom bombarded with calls to do presentations, which I understand because it's Fire Prevention Month, Fire Prevention Week, but um, please, I, I would, I would have any calls come in now. Can I give my contacts? Absolutely. Can I show it? Or are they going to be able to see this or no? No way. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, so you could call me at any time. Again, Fire Inspector Clayton Walker, 508-324-2740. My, my direct extension, 5114. Uh, if I'm not there, absolutely, you can call Jeff and just ask for Jeff Medeiros. My email, I, I do a lot through email. C Walker at frfd.org. Once again, it's cwalker at frfd.org. Give me a shout out, and um, we can set you up with one of these one of these fine educational trainings. Yep. Great. I, you know, I just want to touch, go back a little bit. Um, Thank you. Autism. Yes. So I've been to two situations. We had a fire in Tivin where I was called in from mutual aid, um, and the kid died in the house because he ran to a closet, yes. couldn't get him out. Right. Then there was a situation in Somerset, when they had touch a truck, there was an autism kid there, got away from his parents, and when we called the fire and police, we couldn't control the, this young kid. We told them, don't respond to what lights and siren. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what happens? Yeah. They respond to lights and siren. siren, and this, poor kid went spastic mm -hmm. and then when the public safety officials police and fire got there they approached him and he went even crazier yep so i i think that this is a, a very um touchy situation mm -hmm. with parents that have autism children and even adults right. not just kids um what's the education on our side for that, do we ha do we have it? I know there's a program that co they come in every so often and teach the firefighters and stuff like that. Do do we do anything? Well, what a, a, a tough situation that w that we deal with is actually the, the fire drills. Mm -hmm. um, many of the schools, as you know, have autistic kids. Yep. Uh, a couple in particular. We've even gotten to the point because again, I I know this through St. Vincent's, um, where we don't really want to warn the people that were coming to do a fire drill. Mm -hmm. uh, but in those situations, I would much rather 
give a little bit, a little bit of a heads up that we are going to pull the fire alarm and prepare those kids, whether it be um, uh, ear protection. Protection. Yeah, thank you. That, that was a, uh, yeah. yeah. Ear protection to, <coughs> to limit the noise, just so they know we're coming, but they still had to do the, the fire safety of the fire drill, but we're not actually restraining the child to mm -hmm. get them out of the building. Um, very, very tough situation. Uh, very tough. Because uh, we respond. We respond like we respond, not knowing where these kids are. And you talk about lights and sirens, probably some of the worst things that you can come blaring in to a situation with an autistic kid. Loud sounds. Right. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, it's, it's very tricky. Yeah. I, I, God bless the, the, the parents who, um, in those emergency situations, I, I feel for it because, like we said, we do see it sometimes in mm -hmm. fire drills. And um, I don't know if there's, there's like further education. The, the, or there, there are some people, actually there's a couple of organizations in Massachusetts uh, that address this. One of them is a firefighter whose son uh, is affected by autism as well. and. There's a lot of different studies out there, but as far as to say there's anything concrete right now, yeah. it's almost still at that point of the let's see and let's try different things. And uh, obviously, quiet is better as opposed to the loud sounds because the loud sounds uh, does tend to intensify those behaviors. And uh, so it's an ongoing thing. I took a course on autism through uh, mass emergency management, mm -hmm. and um, some experts was talking about that. And I remember when they says about the sirens, so we right. called that department and said, "Don't use the sirens." Right. But maybe the dispatcher didn't understand. Yeah. And I guess the other thing they were saying to us, it's like you alluded to before, when you have your gear on, SBA mask, and everything else on, with your tanks behind your back, and you approach an autism kid like that. All he can see is like, a, this guy's a monster coming right. at me. Right. So he's diff it, it, it's, it's a very precarious situation when you have those kids in that situation. Right. right. And how do you deal with it? And I think all of us, the whole, entire public has to be more educated on how to handle this, right. these situations. I think, um, so I, I know in my car I have um, three autism kits, and it does have earmuffs. It right. has like a rattle, so they can rattle and stuff such as that. Right. Um, there's a lot of other stuff in that little kit as well. Um, and I know EMS has it as well yep. in their ambulances. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it could be a very, very um, touchy thing for public safety when they respond to a scene, because most guys are not educated in that. Right. right. And you have to deal, at, deal with that according when you get there. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, ultimately, if we were ever in a situation with the fire, we're gonna do what we need to do to make sure that they get out safe. Get out safe, yeah. But in the cases where I know in the past we have run into some issues when we are doing the fire drills because when you have horn strobes going off within a building, you can try to protect the children as much as you want uh, who have autism. But the, some of those horn strobes are pretty loud yeah. that are getting through, um, you know, the ear protection. So, you know, I have seen a couple scenarios that really you feel bad you know, because you see the child becoming uh, disturbed oh. due to the sound. And uh, so like Clayton had said, in a lot of cases now, we will, where it's a drill, it's not our intention to cause anybody some sort of discomfort. Right. So we will give them like a little bit of advance warning because who's better than to know the children's behavior than the teachers that work with them every day. So we'll go, we'll talk to them, tell them that we're gonna be having a fire drill. And because ultimately, real world, if we go there and it's a real incident, we're gonna do what we need to do to make sure everybody gets out safely. Great, thank you. Well, that's gonna conclude our show for today. Oh. That went by quick. That certainly did. <laughs> Thank so you. maybe we could pick this up again, um, like we spoke about. Maybe you know, continue on the other stuff we spoke about uh, that we didn't get to the other day. Uh, last open burning, extension cords, space heaters, oil, uh, old wiring in homes. I mean, that's get to be a big problem now. It is when people plug an extension cords in all over the place and the, 
the houses can't carry all this computers and right, the load. Right, and, and especially where we're going to be changing the clocks come next weekend. Yeah. Make sure if you still have battery operated detectors, yeah, make you sure you change your batteries. Make sure you test your detectors on a monthly basis to make sure they're working for you. Well, Fire Inspector Jeff Medeiros, Clayton Walker, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Chief. And thank you for having us here, Chief. pick this up again another day. Sounds good. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.